Uh, welcome everyone, I'm uh, Lucio Bernardo, member of the Global Support Services of WebRatio. And the, today's webinar is uh, about uh, how to invoke web services using WebRatio. Uh, this webinar uh, is about web services and we'll go through this topic from a different perspective, which is not just the technical one, but we are going through the reasons, the problems, solutions, and finally, uh, we're going to see how to invoke web services inside WebRatio. And um, the webinar will last about one hour, and uh, at the end, I will uh, leave some space for questions and answers. So just, if you have some questions, just write the questions inside the chat, and then at the end of the, of the webinar, I will answer your questions directly from, from the chat. So, Let's, uh, let's make a little step back in time. We are in, uh, in Milan in uh, 2013. Uh, Milan is the Italian uh, financial capital, and uh, the palace that you see in the background is the Unicredit Palace. Unicredit is a uh, European bank leader for leasing and uh, leasing uh, management. The headquarters are uh, in Milan, and uh, this company has more than 3,000 employees in 17 different countries. The leasing management uh, platform is used by more than 5,000 banks spread all around the world. And uh, in 2012-2013, uh, Unicredit decided to use WebRatio to realize the front end and the leasing management platform. Uh, starting from a problem-oriented uh, point of view. So basically, we are going to see all the uh, problems and the uh, goals that Unicredit was trying to achieve and why uh, they decided to adopt WebRatio. Uh, starting from the today's most important challenges for a big company of the service industry. and. Uh, a common trend in service industry from an IT point of view is switching from mostly 80s and 90 based IT systems, especially for banks, uh, in order to have uh, the possibility of creating and releasing quickly an agile web application which unifies the new front end <clears throat> but still relies on the previous existing structure, which is the back end. And the today's most important challenges uh, are mostly related to the quick deliver of the web application, starting from the point that companies want to, to achieve high quality application in a very compressed time frame, and so develop high quality apps in very short times. The web application must be also very rigorous and based on open standards. And they also guarantee uh, enterprise-level interoperability uh, for application that must be also multi-platform and multi-device. Supporting the web mobility is one of the most important challenges of the today's market since a common thought that uh, this in this IT sector is that in 2014 the number of mobile devices will finally exceed the number of world population. So these uh, challenges are all uh, very good and contemporary examples that applies very good to a huge number of big companies. And all of those uh, challenges must be considered uh, also with the reuse and managing of the complexity of the application, starting from the support, the updates, the management, and so on. So, what is the uh, major web trend of nowadays is to move to web services. Web services are made available from business web servers and they are made for web users or web connected programs. The development and availability of web services is a major web trend nowadays since they standardize the data uh, formats and data uh, exchanging using XML, which is also the foundation for the web service description language, uh, also known as WSDL. So, 
in the, in the latest time, a huge number of products emerged to be uh, able in publishing and uh, developing existing application as web services. And it's important to understand what is a web services. Web services are application components that communicate each other using open protocols. Uh, they are self-contained and self-describing, so they can be used by uh, the client, which is the requester, that can belong to many uh, other applications. And basically, the reason of why uh, everyone is moving to the web services is that web services are uh, are used for guarantee the interoperability between existing software since they provide the possibility of defining a exchange of data between different application and platform using the very same format which is the XML format. Then uh, web services guarantee also that uh, you can reuse application components or uh, directly existing applications in fact, web services allow you to reuse existing application and the changes that you need on the web service business logic are completely transparent to the final user. Then you can use web services to build complex services starting from different uh, simple web services that may be combined all together. And no matter who makes the service available. And finally, you can use web services to detach the front end and the back end of your web application, which is still one of the most uh, one of the most important reasons of adopting a web service. Then uh, let's see why uh, Unicredit moves to the to the web service uh, structure. Unicredit in the January of 2012 redesign its entire information system embracing the uh, service-oriented architecture. Uh, the existing systems have been wrapped and exposed using more than 100 web services and a lot of general purpose services have been exposed to. The reason is that web services can be invoked by the front end or the leasing management but also by other applications. The backend was made in uh, the backend of the business logic was made in Oracle, so uh, this kind of service-oriented structure is still guaranteeing that interaction between the backend and the front end. So, what is a web service? Uh, we have already seen. Now let's see what is a service-oriented architecture. Service-oriented architecture is an underlying structure that supports the communication between different services and basically is the way to define uh, how two different entities are interacting each other, one in behalf of the other one. So basically you have someone who makes the request and the other entity that performs some business logic and gives back a response. The interactions between the two entities are defined using the web service definition language uh, used for defining the description. And each interaction, since it is self-contained, it will be independent for any other interaction that you may have. This is uh, schema that represents the structure of the service-oriented architecture in Unicredit uh, case study. As you can see, the structure is divided into a series of layers which belongs to any different uh, tier of your uh, service uh, structure. For example, uh, you have one, one layer for the clients in which you have internet and internet clients, the access layer, the presentation and application layer, the integration layer, and finally the resource layer and the database layer. Uh, the web ratio of uh, front-end and management of web services is placed in the presentation and application layer, as you can see from here. 
So integrating the web services inside an existing structure means to manage all this complexity. But using web ratio, Unicredit it uh, achieved a lot of goals, a lot of interesting uh, features, which are exactly the value of using web ratio to manage the web services. Using web ratio, Unicredit was able to industrialize the development and integration of web services in the enterprise existing applications. Also, <clears throat> the optimize the time and uh, the release uh, for the web application since web ratio works with its own components which are defined and tested in a huge number of other applications. And they managed to centralize using reusable modules uh, how to manage the response and the error management for the web service that they used. Using web ratio also enables to manage very quickly the changes and the adjustments that you have to make to your web services since web ratio integrates the web services using the XSD model, which is an underlying structure which is very easy to change and very easy to update. And finally, using web ratio, you can also check and validate the formal correctness of the web service that you are going to use. So, invoking a web service in web ratio, no matter how the structure that you have is complex, it is very simple and you only need to uh, keep in mind that you are working mainly using the SOAP protocol and you have to know about these two operations which, is, which are the two uh, web ratio components used to manage the integration and the invoking of the web service. The first one is the request response operation that is used to make a request and receive a response from the web service and then you have the XML input output operation which is used to save the result, the response of the invocation into your uh, data structure. And the interaction with the web services is modeling starting from the wisdom definition of the web services which is really the starting point of all the modeling process. And Today we are going to see a very uh, simple example of how to model uh, a web service, the invocation of a web service in web ratio. We, we will use uh, a very simple web service, which is a mock-up web services for retrieving this company stock quote value given the symbol of a company. Uh, also, this is a very uh, common uh, matter of usage inside the bank and uh, the bank uh, com context, let me say. First of all, let's see what is SOAP. SOAP is the protocol that we are going to use in this example and it is the most used uh, on, the, on the web. SOAP is the acronym for Simple Object Access Protocol. Uh, it is a protocol that allows you to make exchanges between a web server and an application which may uh, work with different operating systems, different programming languages. Since you are going to use open standards and open protocols like HTTP and XML. So basically a sub message which is the information which is exchanged between the web server and the application is an XML document composed of an envelope, an header, a body, and a phone. Okay? So we are going to manage this exchange of information using this uh, XML document. And when uh, you start modeling the evocation of a web service in web ratio, you have to start, uh, except from the visual definition that now we are going to see in a very, in a very few minutes, you have to start from the data structure, so you have to start from the domain model. Okay? The domain model will, uh, will be defined starting from the XSD uh, provider, which is a container of XSD resources. Uh, every, uh, each, single, sorry, each single XSD resource is the 
reference for the soft message that you're going to exchange between the web service and the application. And as you can see, in Webrisho we are able to use an automatic procedure which is called Access Desynchronization, which allows you to create the domain model structure starting from an XSD uh, structure. Okay, so as you can see, we are going to we are going to have typically two different uh, objects in our domain model, two different entities. One is the entity for invoking the web service, which in our situation is called the get quote entity, which contains the message, the information that we are going to send to the web service. And on the other one, we have the object that keeps, that manages and saves the response for the web service execution, which is the get quote response entity, in which we have the get quote resolve attribute. Okay? And then we have another type of model, which is the IFML model. The IFML model is used to define the user uh, interface, the user interaction between the browser and our uh, application. So here we are going to create a page that contains the form. Inside the form, the user is going to insert the symbol of the company that I want to look the stock quote for. And uh, we are going to show the details for that stock quote and an error message. Uh, as you can see, outside the page, we have uh, an object which is called call get, uh, get uh, stock quote, which is the business logic for invoking the web service. And inside this object, we are going to create the very basic uh, structure for invoking the web service and saving the rest. So basically, this is the third piece of model that you have to create inside web ratio, which is called action definition. Inside here, we will receive the information from the form. We will make the request to the web service, and here we are going to save the response of that web service inside the domain model entity that we have created with the automatic procedure. Now, uh, we will uh, see step by step with our web ratio live modeling uh, section how to create this simple example. Okay? As I said, we are going to start from the wisdom, which is the web service definition, and uh, we are going to create from scratch a very simple, very, uh, a very small web project that looks like this inside the browser. Okay? So we will have a form for uh, inserting the symbol for the stock quote search, and then in the very same page we are going to show the stock quote response, which is this uh, uh, string that contains all the results that we want to that we want to manage from web service. So uh, let me start this quick tutorial on how to invoke a web service in uh, uh, web ratio. We are going to use an example uh, Amocap uh, web service, which is published on this address. So I just open uh, this uh, whistle inside my browser. And this is the uh, whistle, which is the web service definition. As you can see, it contains already the access the schema, which is the reference for the remote resource, which is the stock quote access the definition, and here it contains all the definition for operations and methods. So let's create in web ratio a simple web project that contains the logic for invoking the web service and managing that uh, from the IFML model. So we create basically a new web project Uh, give an example name like web service. Okay. This is the uh, main project screen for the web service uh, project. And from here, we are going to start creating the web service definition. So, the so called in web, web service provider. So, we just have to define in our project 
from this uh, outline view, one source of data, one uh, data provider, which in our situation is the web service provider. So we just right click here and we create a new web service uh, provider. This uh, web service provider can be uh, renamed something like Stoke Court Service. This uh, web service provider uh, refers to a remote resource, so we are going to define the uh, URI for the web service provider, and I just copy and paste the string in this property. And once that I have this configuration, I can just save and test if the connection is working with the web service. So I just open, I just click this button, and I can see the very same structure also inside web ratio. Okay, I have this very same with the whole definition file inside web ratio. And now that I have the web service provider, I can add the XSD structure for managing the results and the message of that web service. So I just right click on the service data provider node and I add a new XSD provider. So I can first of all give a name to this object which is stop quote uh, XSD or stop quote provider. Uh, the XSD provider is just a node that contains uh, a lot of sub elements which are the XSD resources. So in order to <coughs> have the connection to the stock quote uh, XSD structure, I have to right click here and add an XSD resource. Okay? I can rename this object in the stock quote uh, XSD. <coughs> and uh, here I have to make the reference with the XSD structure of this web service. The structure of this web service is embedded inside the whistle schema, since I showed you previously, and I can show you once again from here, the XSD schema node inside the whistle definition. So I go back on my uh, XSD resource, I give the name, I select the type, which is embedded whistle schema, and then here I have to uh, put the very same path for the web, web service definition, so for the whistle. It's the very same object, and clicking here, it automatically makes the reference to the other one, okay? You can see here, it keeps the reference to the stock quote access the uh, provider, the, the access the schema. Now that I have the uh, structure, that I have the providers, the data providers, I can create inside the domain model the data structure for managing the web service invocation. So basically I just right click on the XSD provider and I choose the command XSD uh, synchronization, synchronize XSD, okay? By clicking here, it starts an automatic, an automatic procedure that looks for the XSD uh, resources that I have defined for that provider and shows the objects that will will be imported inside my domain model, which are the get code entity and the get code response entity. Okay, so uh, basically the type of entities that we are going to create has the duration to be of session database. Okay, this means that the context and the scope of the entities is uh, with the session. Okay, uh, at this point I can import all the objects by clicking this import all object button. It clears the view so I can just click on finish and saving and moving to the domain model uh, view I'm able to see inside here the structure that was previously on the slides. Okay, so I have the, the external package inside my domain model for the XSD provider which is the stock code provider. Then I have an inner package, which is the so-called package for the XSD resource. And aside here, I have two different entities. The first one is the get code response, which is the entity to manage the response of the web service. And the other one is the get code uh, entity, which keeps the reference for invoking the web service. And by now, I need only 
I only need to make a change here since uh, typically the string that the web service is returning after the invocation it will be uh, uh, longer than 255 characters so I need to change the default size of the string object that I want to save and I need to switch for uh, a string attribute so I just select the string attribute and I switch from string type to text type since in this way I'm able to manage also strings also response strings which are longer than 255 characters okay so I can save everything and at this point I can go back to the project structure since I need to create the interaction model, the IFML model for letting the user uh, type a value, a symbol and get the response inside uh, the page. Okay, So I need to create a new site view for my project and I need to right click on the site view node of my project and use the common add site view. Okay? Here I just type uh, public for the name and clicking on finish I will see the work area of that site view. Inside here uh, I will put a home page. So I select the page item for the, the toolbar and just place here the page. I rename this one into the home and the home page will be the access point for my uh, user, okay, for the web application. Now, I create in a different page the interaction for the user to invoke the web service, so I just create another page inside the site view, which will be the get so-called uh, page, okay. I set this page as landmark since the user will be able to access this page anytime from the side view and inside this page I need to model the IFML uh, structure in order to let the user uh, insert the values and see the results. Okay, So the first item that I'm going to place inside this get store quote page is the form. Uh, I select the form component from here and I just put it here. This is the uh, get store quote uh, form, okay? And you remember I have inside in my model the get quote entity, so I just make the reference from this form to that entity, which keeps the, <coughs> the uh, message to be sent to the web service. So you can just right click here and choose the entity fill wizard option and select from here the get quote entity. If you click on next, you can see all the messages, that, all the messages attributes that you want to send. In this situation, I have only the same, so I can just click on finish, and the form is automatically uh, created with also the symbol field that you can see here inside the outline view. Okay. Then inside the page, I need to show the results to the user assigned it a detailed component which will keep the reference to the current responses I receive from the web service. Okay, so I just select from the view components section of the toolbar the details components and I place it here inside the page. Uh, I can rename this one uh, so called details. It uh, keeps the reference to the other entity that we have created with the access desynchronization so I just go inside the properties view and I select as entity value the uh, get code response entity, okay? And then I have to select the display attributes that I want to show here. Uh, basically, our entity contains only one attribute which is the entire result of that invocation. So I can just select this one and click on OK. Then inside the page, uh, I will show also the error message, uh, if, if any. Uh, after the execution of the web service, so I need to place inside this page also the message component, which will be the uh, error message, okay, I just rename it uh, error message here. And from an IFML point of view, I'm more or less done. I only need to uh, make here the reference, I only, I'm only adding the reference for the action to be executed, okay. Uh, remember that every time that you need to execute some business logic inside your 
by application, you need to refer to an action definition. And the object that you have for referring action definition inside the site view is uh, an action. Okay? So we put an action outside this page. Right now, it will refer to uh, no uh, action definition. But let's just create the IFML uh, interaction uh, model uh, here. So we just have the flows. We will have one flow to submit the sample from the form to the action. So I just put this flow here. I give a name like uh, get store quote. And then this action that performs the execution, that will perform the execution of the web service call may uh, return a success. Uh, a value or may fail. So I need to add from here two different flows. One is the OK flow. The OK flow goes directly to the details components and will pass the, uh, once that we have the action, it will pass the primary key of the stock quote that we received from the response. And I need to add here a KO flow which goes directly to the error message uh, component. Okay, so from an IPML point of view, I'm done, okay, just with the page, the components, and the flows, okay. Uh, now we need to, uh, first of all, save and then go back to the project view since we want to create right now the business logic to invoke the web service. Uh, we just need to create a new module definition, okay. We call this one uh, action definitions. And you will see a brand new work area to create uh, action definition. So we just put here the action definition that we want to invoke from the side view. Uh, we can call this thing call uh, get store quote. Okay. Then we can save and double click on it. This is the internal structure of our action definition. And first of all, let's build the skeleton, so the basic structure. The basic structure is made of an OK port, which manages the success behavior of the action definition. We can rename this one success. And we can add a KO port, which manages the failure execution of our uh, invocation. So I can just rename it failure. Then one that we have the structure, the basic skeleton, we can add input and output parameters for the action definition. As inputs here, we will receive basically uh, the symbol for the invocation. I will show you now another uh, way to add this uh, this feature. So let's just concentrate on the fact that here we will receive the symbol for invoking the web service, which is the name of the company. And here we will return the primary key of the response since we need the primary key to promote the details of that so called Here, instead, we are going to return on the failure port an error message, okay? Uh, there is the quickest way to manage uh, input and output parameters in web ratio, which is placing directly the business logic uh, objects inside the action definition, and then use some wizards, some tutorials, which are automatic procedure inside web ratio, okay? So, <clears throat> we need to uh, make a request to the web service and receive a response. So, we are going to use a request response operation that you can find inside the service component section of the toolbar. Okay? So, you just select this one. You place it here. Uh, this component is going to uh, execute the uh, so-called web service. We can rename this one and get so called. It automatically gets the reference to the only web service provider that we have inside the project, which is the so called service. And then from the properties view, we have to select the web service operation that we want to invoke. And the operation is the get quote operation, which is exposed by the wizard definition. So just by selecting the web service provider, which is an automatic choice since we have only one web service provider, and the web service operation, we are able to define the logic of the action definition, adding an OK flow from the input port to the request response, OK? Then we can use uh, 
uh, from uh, the input port, the input port wizard using the OK flow, which is the outgoing one from the input port. And using this input port wizard, we are able to select all the values or the input parameters that we want to show inside the uh, inside the action, okay, that we want to use there. We want to pass directly the symbols since we have the symbol field inside the form. So we select this one and we just click finish. And automatically WebRish is going to set the binding also on the flow, okay, as you can see here. Then what can happen? It may happen that the execution of the web service may uh, throw an exception or uh, has a failure. So we need to add a KO flow starting from the request reference that leads to the failure port, to the KO port. And on the KO port, we can uh, use the output port wizard based on the KO flow that we have here. And we use, in the KO flow, we will show the error message for the web service execution. As you can see here, I have plenty of parameters that I can manage as outputs, okay? Once again, WebRish automatically binds the values. Now, if the execution of the web service is successful, uh, the next step it will be to save. In this situation, it will be better to import the response inside the uh, XML uh, into, sorry, the domain model entity, okay? So I can rename this object, which is the XML import uh, input uh, output operation into save. Uh, store quotes. And here I have to define the entity on which I'm going to save the store quote, which is the get code response entity. Okay? Now, from the request response, I need to pass the result of the invocation to the XML input output, and I do this operation just by drawing an OK flow. And on this OK flow, I need to pass the response the entire object of the response to the uh, XML document that the XML input output operation is expecting, which is the get port XML document. Okay, and uh, here uh, I can uh, assign the get port response to the get port response XML document. Okay. This object is the XML object that contains the entire result, the entire uh, results, the response of the web service execution, okay? And finally, once that I have the uh, so-called saved on my entity, I can return, I can exit from this action using another OK flow from the XML input output to the success port. I can use, once again, on the success port, the output port wizard using the outgoing flow. And I will uh, use here the OID, which is the primary key of the brand new stock port that I'm saving here. So I just click on finish. This will create the output port parameter and will also bind the value on the OK flow. At this point, I'm uh, done from a business uh, logic point of view. I have the XN execution to be uh, run on my web service and I can go back to the site view and first of all I have to assign this action to the proper action definition selecting the action definition from the available ones okay so I just select the call get store quotes action definition and now I'm able to set uh, the bindings on the flows in order to execute this piece of model Okay, so starting from the get stock, the get so quotes uh, flow, I can double click here and pass using the the automatic uh, the get uh, binding, the automatic procedure, the field which is the sample field with the sample input parameter. Okay, then I can open the OK flow outgoing from the action definition, and I can assign here the OID of the quote response to the uh, and the uh, condition, and I can set here the error message to the shown message property of the message component. Okay. At this point, in 15 minutes, as you can see, I'm I realized my uh, vibration model, and now it's time to test if everything is working. Then I can use 
the generator run command, it will start also the application server. So in, in a few seconds, we will see the final result on the browser, okay? So just wait for Tomcat to initialize the, the, initialize the application server and for Webration to uh, generate the entire project. Just a matter of seconds, so... Okay, now starting the application server, it will uh, create a web app folder. And finally, it will start the browser on our home page of the web project, which is the home page of our side view, okay? Okay. So, this is the home page of our project. As you can see, we have here the reference for the landmark page Get Stockwatch. And clicking here, you will see the form that contains the symbol field for retrieving the value of the Stockwatch of a company. Okay, so I can just type here uh, web ratio and use the Get Stockwatch flow to execute the web service and as you can see here this is the result of the invocation of the web service it contains all the information for that object right now they are uh, let me say uh, sample information but this is uh, I think a very good example uh, of how you can invoke a web service in Webration and as you can see it's very it's very simple to do any uh, further change that you have to that you have to make on the web service structure, it can be easily done from the project node inside the web service uh, provider from here. And you can also change the reference to the access of the object if you want, so it's very simple. And you just have to update the uh, web project and uh, generate the new, uh, the new status of, of the application. Okay? So, just for having a quick resume of what we have seen, in this webinar, uh, web services are combination, are application components, sorry, that communicate using an open protocol that in our situation is sub protocol. Okay, they are extremely useful if you want to reduce the complexity of your uh, application, and they alter the use and the interoperability, and allows also to be multi-device and multi-platform. Web ratio for invoking the web services supports both the self protocol and REST one. Okay, we have seen how to invoke in a web ratio a SOAP web service, and in order to model in web ratio the web service invocation, you need to know uh, the web, the withdrawal definition for the web service, the two operations that we have seen, the request response and the XML input output. And you have to know how to manage the action definition skeleton, so uh, providing the input port parameters and the output parameters of your business logic, okay? And finally, let's see what uh, the ICT director of Unicredit, Stefano Borelli, said about vibration, okay? I just leave this one for reference. So as you can see, WebRatio is the best solution, uh, by his word, to lower the cost and less time to be on the market that is fundamental, is a fundamental necessity to be competitive nowadays. So, uh, next steps are going on the WebRatio learning uh, platform, which is on learn.webratio.com. Which you can, in which you may find some other documentation material or, uh, you know, uh, documentation for vibration if you want to, uh, if you want to deepen this topic or you can just call for a commercial demo in Minneapolis or in San Jose. Uh, so, this is everything for the webinar, the today's webinar. I just give you uh, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, let me say, to make your questions, uh, just write the question if you have any question inside the chat or good meeting, then I will answer your question. Uh, thank you for, um, uh, for uh, uh, 
attending this uh, webinar. So I just wait for your question right now. Uh, I see that from now there are no questions. You can write directly on the chat of go to webinar. Uh, still no no question on the chat. I can just show you the uh, web ratio contact page if you want to learn, know more about uh, web ratio. Here you can see all the contacts for uh, for web ratio. Uh, Sales information, software, and whatever. So I just wait for uh, any kind of question. So, uh, I think that we can close here, there are no questions, so thank you for attending this webinar and uh, uh, see you soon on the WebRatio website, thank you.